to go first? Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I would much rather my fiance make less than me. Yeah. Right. Cause because of the fact that as a man, I feel like I should be the the, uh, the breadwinner in the house to be able to support the family. Okay. And if there's an instance where where my where I lose my job and then my wife has to take over, I'm cool with that, but only for a little while. Mm -hmm. But mainly, I want to be the one in charge to be like, um, hey, let me uh, make sure that we're all taken care of, we're all ready to go. Right. And at the very least, that we can work together. Mm -hmm. And I do what I can to get something immediately mm -hmm. afterwards. But I understand that with, with the way times are now, it's, it's, it's increasingly hard to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like my parents or great grandparents' time where my grandpa could like do the work and he'd be the breadwinner. But, my grand, but I think it's different for <clears throat> between black people and for people of other ethnicities, at least in America, mm -hmm. where it's like the man and the woman both have to work. But mm -hmm. overall, fundamentally, it would be better if I made more than my fiance to um, be able to hold the fort down mm -hmm. and keep building up those skills so that I can, so that so that she doesn't have to work as much as she can focus on other things. Right. So um, you're talking in the context that you would probably have a family, kids to take care of. As yes. Well. Right. Okay. Mm, for me, I have to say that I haven't thought about this question. I personally, I don't want to have uh, kids. I don't want to have a family. Just me and my partner. So I think that leaves a little bit more room to not be so stressed about money all the time. So I, I don't know. I, um, just enough that you know, if something happened to me, then we wouldn't be like super broke mm -hmm. like that amount of money would probably be you know decent i i, I honestly i i haven't thought about this mm -hmm. it's like comes i guess something like that comes with age um i um i um ended up going to like university for six years and having to pay off my student loans mm -hmm. and car note for six years and so mm -hmm. i've had to actually start teaching myself more about money and then asking uh, uh, people in my family and other people that I trust that are good with money. Um, I would say long enough to feel that you trust the other person and mm. that you're comfortable with them. Yeah. And I don't know exactly like the hour, day, week, month limit for that. Personally, I don't have such like, you know, how can I say, like time range, yeah. like in my head, like, okay, it has to be like one week. There's no such thing. It's just depends on your feeling. I was, you know, for me, well, at least I got to say, I'm going to back it up, back it up a bit. You know, here in Korea, uh, there's like this unwritten, unwritten rule that, mm -hmm. that says that, that women put on their guys say that, well, we have to wait about, uh, I think like six months or 180 some odd days <laughs> or whatever before you can do it. But what I've come to notice is the fact that I've had instances where I would be with Korean women yeah. and then we would just do it like within a second or third meeting, third or fourth yeah. meeting. Yeah. And I've noticed that that rule was such BS and you have to be the certain type of guy to make them want to break that rule. Because mm. sometimes, as right, they'll, they'll set rules for guys that they don't want to be with, yeah. but then they'll break the rules for the guys they do want to be with. That's hypocritical. Yeah. And I'd say for this, I'd I, I say... Um, knock it out as soon as you possibly can, at the very least, it's because, because uh, you don't you don't want to be in a relationship. You don't want to be with someone. It was just like okay, y'all love them and everything, but I but they're just not that good. Yeah, it depends on like how much sex matters to you in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Personally, it's um, quite important to me. Like, so I agree with what you said that, especially like if it's a really nice guy, and then you see for like i don't know a, a little bit a longer period of time like three weeks and then it's not what you want and you don't really want to um you know make them feel hurt because of that so i yeah i agree with what you said mm. you go first uh, i see about a, a minimum of a year at the very least two years uh, I think my parents got married about about a year or two after they met with one another. Mm. You know about that? They just they just knew. Mm. You know, I've seen some people that said that after five days, they said, "I'm going to marry this woman." That's fast. Um, 
my parents got married also pretty quickly. It was less than a year. But nowadays in my country, it can take, oh, it can take years. Like too many years in my opinion. Oh, yeah. But again, I think it's about the feeling. But I would say like a personal rule for me is that I should, before getting married, I should at least have lived together with the person for at least a year or two. Mm -hmm. It's not even the dating period, it's the living together period that's that's quite important to me because then you figure out how you behave when you're in the same space for a really, you know, how can I say, like, yeah. intensively, like all the time, 24-7. That's when you kind of figure out and realize if this person is for you or not. See, I'm not for that. In Amer uh, where I come from, we call that shacking. And uh, uh, shacking is basically when a man and a woman live together and they're not married. Okay. That's what the old people say. Okay. And I'm actually with them on that. I don't. I don't believe in in uh, people that's not married that should stay together mm -hmm. like that because that's what marriage is for. You know, you're mm -hmm. supposed to figure those things out and work those things work those things out throughout your marriage and uh, mm -hmm. and I have compromise because there's a lot of drama. That can happen when, if uh, people stay together, like we call that common law marriage, mm -hmm. where you have uh, a couple staying together, mm -hmm. and it's like you're married but you're not married, mm -hmm. and um, you get the benefits of someone that is married, and if stuff happens, let's say you get in a fight, if a lot of drama happens, um, one side will favor the other, and that will not look good. You know, so from a uh, from a uh, uh, the standpoint of it. From from legal standpoint yeah. and from a, a social standpoint, I, I can't do that. Okay. Very different thing. Mm hmm Mm. No. Just very short. No. Um, dating? No. But for marriage, I would actually want to be with someone uh, uh, from my home country mm. because I've actually stayed with with uh, with cu with couples that are from different nationalities, and um, the culture clash was just brutal. I'm just like, mm mm. mm. Yes and no. Um, no, again for dating, but but for marriage, yes. Uh, uh, for for marriage for marriage yes I mean I'm not against uh, interracial relationships mm -hmm. I, I'm not against that at all you know but uh, but but for but for the sake of uh, of uh, wanting to keep up with tradition mm -hmm. and, and go along with it then yes that's when I do care about ethnicity okay um no okay no it's my answer because um I have experience of dating outside my ethnicity and is not when there are problems or when there are good times it doesn't really have to do with ethnicity it has to do with you know difference in values or you know difference in how we see the world and of course like cultural clash is something that is like bound to happen when you're dating someone outside of your ethnicity but i would say it's it depends on the couple Depends on the people how much they love each other and how much they're willing to work together to make the relationship work. And I don't think that's really, I don't think that depends on the ethnicity. Yeah, and I like that. I like what you have to say about that a lot. Give me the golf clap. <laughs> My turn? Yes. Um, a little bit. I would, um, I think I would prefer someone who has finished university, but after that, it's um, like I'm doing master's degree, but it's not, I don't think it's necessary for my partner. As long as they have their life together and they're doing what they enjoy doing and they are ambitious and trying to go forward, then um, I think that's like, I don't know, just university is enough for me. Okay. Excuse me. I say uh, for for my woman, um, I mean, uh, uh, it would have to be, yeah, kind of in the middle. Like I don't want her to be s stupid, mm -hmm. obviously, 
But at the same time, if um, if if she if we can if I, she can learn from me and we can learn from each other, yeah. then I'm cool with that. Um, uh, because like uh, things like a master's or a PhD, that doesn't really that doesn't really interest me all that much. I'm like, all right, okay, cool. You're you're really you're really intelligent. You're smart. Cool. Mm. You know, um, how can that help us out in a, in a relationship? What what? What 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 can your degree? What can your sheet of paper do to help us out? To help right. us build from there. If it can do this, great. That's cool. But overall, I want to know more than what's beyond um, what what the piece of paper hanging on the wall says. Mm. Um, I agree that it's not really about the piece of paper. But for me, university was not just you know learning things that you only learn at the university it was also about learning uh growing as a person mm -hmm. and i think uni is like the i would say like the last step in um stepping into the adulthood oh, so yeah. you you learn a lot about you know um organization skills and and how to take care of yourself during university as well it's not just you know about getting the degree the diploma and and all the knowledge is it, for me it was a lot about uh, a lot of other things as well okay cool cool